when you're asked to change a quadratic function from standard form or the just regular quadratic form that we've seen right here and you want to change this into vertex form which looks like this equation over here well if you look this side we just have a regular quadratic and over here we have a grouping squared and you've you've heard me say that before and anytime we need to change something that does not have a quantity squared into something that does the key is completing the square we need to somehow combine these two this these two terms here this x squared term and this this x term together so it is a quantity squared the variables need to be combined so the function that I'm going to change is up here f of x equal to 2x squared plus 8x plus 7 and we're going to complete the square and we're going to um, do this but it's going to be slightly different than what you've done before with completing the square because when we completed the square before we had the entire uh, left hand side or the right hand side was just a number this was equal to zero or it was equal to seven or if it was equal to twelve we had a quadratic equation and we could move things to the other side of the equation but here that's not really what we can do we can we could subtract this seven and move it over here or divide both sides by two but that's not going to uh, mix well with this f of x our function if this was a number, it would. So we're going to complete the square, but we're not going to use both sides of the equation. So I'm going to first group these two things together. I'm going to group those two things together, and I'm going to factor out whatever I can. Because before, we would move the 7 to the other side, and then divide by 2. Now I'm going to just group these two together, instead of getting them isolated. I'm just going to isolate them using parentheses. And now instead of dividing both sides by 2, I'm just going to take a 2 out of both of here to get the x squared term by itself. So when I do that, I get 2, and this will be x squared plus 4x plus 7. So instead of moving things around, I just grouped these two terms together, factored out a 2, and you can see x squared 4x inside here is where I'm going to add that value of d, which I know to be 4 over 2 squared, which in this case is 2 squared, which is 4. So that is my value of d that before I would add to both sides. But now we're completing the square on just one of the sides. But we can still keep in mind that if we you know, add one thing to one side, we can undo it. All right, if we're changing that side and adding it in this uh, space right here, we're going to have to be careful and uh, subtract it as well. And then that way, instead of adding it to the other side, we can just subtract it at the end. And here I'll show you. So x squared plus 4x, I found that value of d. So that's where I'm going to put, put that right here. That's the missing piece that forms a perfect square trinomial plus 7. Now again, before we would have just added that to both sides, but you have to be careful here because I'm not actually adding just a 4 to this right hand side. If we wanted to go back and distribute this and go back to originally what we had, how would this look different than what we originally have? Well, we would have the 2x squared, that's good. We would have the 4x times 2, which would be 8x, that's good. The 7 is also there. What we just added, by putting this plus 4 here, we actually added 2 times 4. We added a value of 8 to this side, compared to what we originally had. So in order to cancel that out, I'm going to have to subtract a 2 times 4, because we need to keep this side the same. So when I put a 4 here, I'm adding a value of 8 to this entire side because it's 2 times 4. So in order to cancel out me putting this 4 here, I need to subtract 2 times 4 at the end. And now you see if you multiply this out and you combined this 8, this would be 8 with this 8, they would cancel out and you'd be left with 
your original equation. So it's a little tricky when we're trying to just use one side of the equation, but it's very similar and it's, it's something that I know you can do. So now, remember this is a perfect squared trinomial. We can write as x squared plus 2, that quantity squared. Or excuse me, x plus 2, that quantity squared. And now, whatever's left here to do is just some small simpl simplifying. We get f of x equal to 2x plus 2 squared. 7 minus 8 is a minus 1. And now this is in vertex form. It's in vertex form which means I can immediately look at this and determine what the vertex is. Remember, the vertex, the factor inside, not the factor, but the uh, adding to or subtracting to, this number in here, this h value, is going to be the x-coordinate, and the outside value here, this is going to be the y-coordinate. But you got to be careful because it's this subtraction sign is built into the formula, built into this form. So you can imagine, what would we have to put in for h so that x minus h becomes x plus 2? And the answer is a minus 2. So your vertex is actually going to be minus 2, and then k is minus 1. And typically you'll hear me say that the vertex is going to be the opposite of the inside and then whatever's on the outside. Opposite on the inside, which is here's a positive 2, we get a negative 2, and then on the outside, negative 1.